France24.com, Western views of China hit no, new lows amid pandemic. Western views of China have soured sharply amid the COVID-19 pandemic, with record numbers in major developed countries seeing the Asian power unfavorably, a survey showed Tuesday. 14 Nation study by Pew Research found sharp deterioration of perceptions on China in the U.S., where Trump has repeatedly sought to pin blame on Beijing for the pandemic. Here are the numbers. 73% of Americans see China unfavorably, an increase of nearly 20 percentage points since Trump took office in 2017 on a nationalist agenda. So uh, negativity towards China shot up most sharply in Australia, which that, that other communist country, which has faced retaliation from its major trading partner as it largely backs its U.S. ally. So, yeah, unsurprising. Just a quick side note. BloombergQuint.com has this story. Las Vegas tops U.S. in rise of apartment tenants not paying rent. Part of our series covering the... I want to say coronavirus, coronaphobia crisis, and the ensuing unemployment and eviction crises. But I am particularly concerned with the ongoing eviction crisis. And I somewhat overestimated the, the, the idea that it would, it would be kind of a fall off cliff moment like the unemployment crisis. Because remember with unemployment, it was Ha ha, guess what? You're not going to work tomorrow. The eviction crisis, not as clear cut as people fail to be able to pay their rents, but there was a moratorium that ended. And, and I did think that there would be kind of a, a cliff drop off effect then. But this is something that is unfolding over a much longer timeline. And we're going to see further consolidation of wealth and power, as is the general purpose of government especially regarding real estate and this eviction substory to the coronavirus crisis is a very important one to follow. So to the story, with COVID-19 tanking tourism, Las Vegas saw the biggest jump in apartment tenants who have stopped paying rent. In September, 10.6% of Vegas tenants missed, paying, missed a rent payment up from 4.1% a year earlier. That's a huge jump. The largest increase in the U.S., according to data on the top 50 metro areas from Real Page Inc., New Orleans. New Orleans also heavily dependent on tourism at the highest overall share of people not paying at 12.9%. But that was from a higher starting point, up from 8.6%. Tenants are most likely to stop paying in areas with the hardest hit economies, duh, including expensive cities. From L.A. to Seattle to New York, where unemployment benefit payments aren't enough to cover high rents and living expenses. As uh, Greg Willett, chief economist at Real Page, said, there's more stress in hospitality focus and expensive markets. The wild card in everything is what happens in the economy, and what happens in the economy is dependent on what happens with the pandemic. Mm -mm -mm. Now, interesting counterpoint across the U.S., rent payments have remained relatively stable with 7.8% failing to pay in September up only 1.5 percentage points from a year ago, according to the National Multifamily Housing Council. Now, even there, a 1.5% increase in people failing to pay rent is going to lead to major repercussions in the housing market, in the employment market, uh, for real estate in general, and then rippling out throughout the economy. That's why I think this, I, I, I don't hear anybody else talking about the eviction crisis as such. I really think it does deserve uh, attention as that because this is going to be one of the, the underreported stories of the Karina crisis, partly because there are a lot of people who are afraid to admit this. I mean, for me, I'm not afraid to admit that I was so afraid I escaped paying rent entirely by buying 10 bare acres to develop myself. And I'm, you know, even in this, like even hearing 
you know, all of the, the horrible stories that people are going through. I, I don't want to say I told you so because it's kind of gloating, but I told you so. This is what you get for living in the matrix. This is what you get for being tied into the system. Whereas this is what I get here in Gardenia being mostly independent from it. The data covers tenants who still occupy their units and doesn't include single family rentals. Oh, 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 really? You just left out single family rentals. It's from professionally managed buildings and more representative of large landlords. Smaller ones tend to own older buildings with poor tenants, more vulnerable to job loss. So even this data right here is extremely limited in covering the entire picture. When they limit the data categorically like that to say that it doesn't include single family rentals or even what portion of current rentals in the United States that represents, you can only draw certain conclusions and, and, and look at trends. And, and one of them we do see with this geographical trend that's worth paying attention to, where are people vulnerable? Where should they be moving away from? But this is a, a bigger problem even than most are willing to admit right now. We saw the number of months ago that 3 million Americans had moved back in with their parents. Of, co of course, most of those college students who realized that their colleges weren't having in-person classes and dorm life just wasn't going to be what it used to be. Might as well go move back in with the rents. But there are a lot of people, millions of Americans who are still struggling. Even though we have come past, we've gotten past uh, you might say the first phase, I don't want to say the majority because who knows how long it's going to last, but the first phase of, of our forced unemployment crisis, uh, we're, we're in the second phase of it now, but there's still a lot of people who are never going to be able to make up their missed rent payments. And that was the reality for, for millions of Americans for whom these moratoriums, moratoria on evictions were ineffective band-aids where they said, well, yes, we, we, we will not let landlords evict you, but your rent is going to keep piling up. And uh, just in my case, to share just a, a sort of side but related financial story, Verizon realized that most people weren't going to be able to make their cell phone payments. And instead of cutting, or excuse me, not most, but uh, of those unemployed, a large number of them were not. And so they very graciously said, all right, well, we're not going to cut anybody off. And I think it was from March till June, Verizon said, you know, we, we, we can, you can, you can float your payments and uh, until June and in June, they cut it off and said, well, now you got to pay but we'll prorate it. We'll prorate it out over the next 10 months. So my cell phone bill is going to be a little bit higher for the next 10 months. I'm not asking you to sympathize with my situation. I'm just showing by contrast how much easier I have it than most people. That's the only bill I got to worry about. Now apply that to your rent or your mortgage. A lot of mortgage payments being missed as well. A lot of homeowners you don't own your home. The bank owns your home and you're, you're on a rent to own program. That's what a mortgage is. It's, it's a bullshit distortion of this concept of ownership with home ownership in the United States to make more people feel like, well, I'm a homeowner. When you go, well, if you own 5% of your house and the bank owns the rest and then you can't make payments, they're going to show you what it means for the bank to own your home. There's a whole other dynamic there that deserves to be examined as well. And there are a lot of Americans hurting right now because they don't have Verizon for landlords. They are not going to be able to just prorate that rent out. It's just, well, moratorium's over, it comes due. And even if they are able to prorate that out, prorating your rent or a mortgage as opposed to your cell phone bill is going to be a lot more difficult. And so this is what's feeding what I also seem to be examining a lot more than most journalists is that there is there's a the ho a homelessness crisis uh growing brewing in america 
that if the government doesn't turn around some of these fundamental dynamics around rent and home ownership and mortgages, we're going to see get a lot worse, continue to get a lot worse. And for a lot of Americans, you put on top of this, the confusion and uncertainty about their personal employment situation, the virus itself. Well, that would explain the suicides and the drug overdoses and the skyrocketing opioid crisis that America is experiencing right now. Yeah. And it's uh, worth taking a moment to acknowledge all the pain that those who aren't getting government money right now are experiencing.